again welcome back to my channel my name is Angel um I was playing with some Makumi Ghanis, um today and I followed the video and I will post a link down below but she used pretty colors it was ecru and some turquoise and some black made a cane out of it first and I went ahead and sliced some off just to save it because I also want to be able to use the cane as some decorations but then this is the strips that I went ahead and um, cut off I feel like I'm spread all over and I don't know if they're in camera but it was just a, a pretty combination of colors I really liked it and I realized that um as I'm looking for tutorials of how to, to make things, there's a lot of how to make, you know, like the stone beads and some on the canes and makumigani, but they don't really show you how to put things together. Once you have your strips, what do you do with them? What are some of the different ways to use them? So, I decided to turn the camera on, and hopefully this can give you some ideas. Um, right here, I've already made two earrings. I went ahead and um, rolled out some black clay, laid the uh, thin strips on it, and then I did roll it through my pasta machine. I didn't want the design to get blurred out too much so I put it between two pieces of parchment paper and that helped you know make it stick together get it nice and even you know because I didn't want it all bumpy because I couldn't get it smooth with the roller and it didn't distort the design too much to make it muddy looking so that was how I did that this I try to get a little creative. Let me show you what I used. I used this, cut out my design, and then I have this wavy cutter, blade, slicer, and I just went ahead and tried to get it down the middle the best I could. And then I have these little, oh my God, they're just bee spacer beads that I have in my bead stash. And I just kind of smushed them in there. I did test them first to see if they will withstand the heat. Um, and these particular ones do. And if they don't, since I didn't glue them in, I just pressed them in, I can pop them back out, put the fresh set in, and, and glue those into place. So that was my backup in case these didn't melt. Because sometimes, even though I've tried it once and it worked okay, you never know. What am I going to do with the rest of these? Um, and that is a good question. Since I have this here and it's already laid out, I am just going to cut out some more earring shapes. And I will try not to get my head in the camera too much this time. <laughs> oh, let's see, I do want some of the... Will that fit? Okay. So this is what to do with if you have cut out your main earrings and you have all these little scrap pieces. And I don't want to roll this up and marble it and, and put it into a, make a kibachon out of it yet because I still had some good things to cut out. Now I'm going to save this and put it away somewhere it won't stick. Just put it on this so it won't stick to anything. And I found out that if you leave your clay on paper, cardstock, and even the deli sheets, it will start to leach. And um, sometimes that's good. If your clay is too sticky, you do want to leach it out. But this is fine. I don't want it leaching. So the parchment paper doesn't seem to absorb whatever polychemical stuff. <laughs> um, I started poking my holes um, before I bake and I just use a little hole 
oh, oh, thin needle to make the hole. And then after I bake it, that's when I will drill the larger hole. But this at least gives me a pilot hole. Because using the awl, I've, that's the second time I've punched a hole in my finger because it slipped. Excuse me, my chair squeaks so much. And I don't know where to put the WD. So I'm going to remove these out of the way. Place them on my cookie sheet. And that is parchment paper that I have underneath it. So once I fill that up, then I'll go ahead and cover it with the sheet of tin foil and I will bake. Now this, what I'm using today, is all polymer polymer clay, obviously. Sculpey. <laughs> Primo. <laughs> Some of it might be three. I don't know if the, this is three. No, this is all Primo. Okay, so it's all Primo. All right. So the next thing I had in mind was to use this. And I am going to figure out in a second how to do that. So I will be right back. Okay, I changed my mind. I am going to use this cutter instead. It's just smaller than the other one. And that way I don't have to piece a lot together. I did piece a bunch of pieces. Oh, and it done stuck. I did piece a lot of smaller pieces together and then rolled it um to make this piece but i made a small i guess i didn't use enough clay so i made a really small square so i didn't have a whole lot um width wise to make larger things but with this with these kind of designs you can i call it cut and paste because i come from the computer world <laughs> cut and paste um and that's what i did so I rolled this out onto my number two because I'm going to make a pendant. And that's just my preference. My first pendants were like so thick. And I couldn't get the rings around them. I had to keep buying bigger and bigger jump rings. So first we're going to add some texture to it. So this is just water and I just lightly missed this. That just helps it not stick. And then I use my roller and I just roll nice and slow so that it doesn't fly everywhere. I'm pressing down a little bit so that it does get indented like that. And I forgot to put a sheet of deli paper under here just to make sure it doesn't stick. So I'm going to do that when I flip it over. So now I'm trying to find my blade. And let's get this up. Oh, wait. I don't have to do it yet because I want the front. Normally I also want the back. We'll worry about the back later. But I do want the front textured. See how quickly I forget? Okay, so this is a technique I learned from Julie Piccarello. It's in uh, Patterns in Polymer Clay. And she called this the Lazy River. And when she cut it, she curved her blade, you know, to, well, she probably has a blade already made for that. And that way it splits. Well, I didn't think ahead, because I never do <laughs> when I make stuff. Um, I just kind of wing it, I guess. But what I can do is create my own. Um, now I have this piece here. Let's see if it will be big enough. No. Oh, I'm going to have a hole in it. So, yeah, it'll, it'll work. Yeah, these aren't tutorial people. You should know that by now. This is me winging it. <laughs> and losing my blaze just like that. Oh, my goodness. 
there it is it was hiding okay so here you can see there is texture under here it, i used black and um, i put some silver mica powder on it just to i felt it went with it i don't know that i'm going to put any mica powder on this one though and mica powder is pretty and since this is kind of close to that let me see what i do have I just bought these, and I learned something new. These are for your nails, and they are so pigmented. It's crazy. It looks so pretty. This is it says Chrome Nail Powder. It's from Art Don. Art Done. Art Done. I found it on Amazon. I still don't know what these are for. Do. There we go. We can use this electric blue. This is just Rolio pigments. I'm sure I got them off of Amazon as well because I like to get things quick. I'm not sure. I gotta plan this a little bit where I want to put the mica powder. There. That always makes things nice and shiny. Alright, so while this is over here, I'm going to cut it with this wavy blade. I don't know if it matters. Where? Just want to make sure I have enough on either side. That was either the top or the bottom. That's cool. So, now keep in mind where is the one that I was going to use? This. Let's go downwards. There. I gotta make sure I have enough. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit. I don't want it sinking into the blue background. I just want to stick it to the blue background. I don't want it flush. All right. So then, make sure I have it right. Jiggle, jiggle. Okay. Let's see the reveal. Okay. Come in pieces, parts. Ta -da! There you go. So that is your pendant. Now, later on, after I bake this, I'll make a, a cute little bell for it. But this is done. If you're not going to make a bell, you can go ahead and punch your little hole in it now if you want. If you want to add any embellishments, you can do that now. I kind of want that just to be on its own. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the bell. I can go ahead and use that. Save that. Put some powder on it and do a kind of a roll. Let me see if I got one handy. 
No, it's way over there. My container <laughs> that has all the different styles. This one has, I cut a circle, made some holes in it, and folded it over. If you Google bales on, a, well, not Google, but if you do a search for bales on Pinterest or YouTube, they've got some great tutorials. Also, if you look on my YouTube, I've got them saved under my air dry resin clay, you know, slashes list of all the things that I've watched that have helped me learn. Okay, now this I made the other day. It's a uh, Mogumigani, a Kumigani cane, but I use black and white. I did put there were already holes in here. That was just the design that I made for this particular cane. And then I used mica powders applied with a little pokey tool. And that gave color. And then I used the cane, the black and white cane that I had made called Jelly Roll, I believe. And I just, you know, just for some interest. And you can see it's not even perfect. They're torn. I don't want that perfect. You know, I want something organic. There's my little fish with my initials on it. And I decided to use, you know, a pre-made or store-bought bale for this one. Well, let's go ahead and try to do something like that. I probably need to wash my hands. Wipe my hands off. The clay is sticking to me. It's just a baby wipe. And I'm going to wipe this down. Sorry, that shakes the little tape I have here. Make sure it's dry. So we're going to use some of this. We should wait, maybe. Yes. Okay. So I don't want to use up all my turquoise because that's all I have left. So I am going to roll out some more black. On to a number two for the background. Ooh, pop my knuckle. That's this knuckle. I am falling apart, people. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to start it off on a zero, get it flat enough. It's still pretty soft from when I worked with that last batch. Two. Maybe I'll leave it at one. Yeah. I never know how thick to make them. Even though I'm going to put some stuff on, it's very thin. So, yeah, let me leave it at one so that when I try to burnish these in, it won't flatten out too, too thin. Okay. The plan. Now, what I'm going to do is. I can get me something. Decorate the back first. And this time I'm just going to put the water on it. I see a bunch of air bubbles. No matter how careful I am, I get air bubbles. And I just found this little texture. I think I got it off of Amazon. extra thing. Okay, I want to dry it off. I'm not going to use the same paper towel that I'd use to wipe the board because it'll transfer all that clay. Ask me how I know. Okay, dry enough. Let's turn it over. Okay, let's see. <laughs> I forgot which thing I was going for. So, let me find, nope, yep, yep, this is it, and let's throw it around, why don't you, I want to layer some things on it, um, how do I want to do that, I want to use a big piece, I 
Okay, so this isn't big enough. So I am thinking make these thin, you know, cut them in thin slices. Oh, make sure I've got you on record. Okay. <laughs> and just that'll make up the rest of the space. Yeah, improvise. Okay. What are you doing? Get over there. Let's burnish a teensy bit. And I don't care if this is bumpy because it is. Um, because of the way I sliced it. Like I said, I don't go for the smooth, pretty, you know, factory-made look. I like to go for the organic, nature-made, should I say angel-made. Um, let's see. And I'm going to squish it. Let's do I think this one might be thinner. I'm not positive. Move everything else out of the way since it's a long blade. I'll flatten it out some. I'm not going to press down on anything yet. I need to put that away because I'm going to grab it again. Just want to make sure that I can cover this ink. Okay, so let's use a better piece. You can go down somewhere. Let's not use you yet. But I will use you because I don't like throwing things away. Oh, that's good. I rolled this over just because it flattens it one way. And so if you turn it, hopefully it'll flatten it back the other way. A girl can hope, right? Okay. See, I squish it back together. I just think those are such pretty colors. I don't know why. I never really knew about the blue and the... Browns being a thing uh, to later in life. <laughs> I don't know if somebody had a nursery those colors and asked me to make something. I am not sure. Now I can run this through a pop machine and that will definitely get things flatter. But they just tend to distort so much. So I don't mind if these jelly roll pieces distort some. They're definitely higher than everything else. This does have a dip. Is that an air bubble? Boop. Okay. I'm just wondering. What I could do is make things flatter. Some things do bother me. I think that's the OCD. <laughs> oh, and sometimes they don't bother me until I've finished polishing them. Then I'm like, oh no. Let's fix this. dip is not as bad. I am more happy with that. Okay. So. I'm trying to use, utilize as much as I can always use that for something. Oh, I didn't even need that holy one. Okay. We're going for it. Yeah, that ain't 
going to come up. So let's go ahead and cut one more piece. I just want to see how it will look if I I'll put something over there. I'm trying to cut it as thin as I can. So I don't have to roll as much to flatten it. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. We have that. I am happy with that. Will this hurt it? Take away from it just a little bit. Will that hide the blue? I think since we have so many here, I think that's enough. Because here I used three, but I spaced them around. So it is a different design, a different concept. So I think I've got enough of these. Now, do I want something there? Let's see what we have. decorate things up a bit and these are the little spacer beads I want gold then I just kind of audition them yeah that kind of looks cool I don't hate it let's put it that way <laughs> okay if you had little things well these aren't it I'll use these here they are. These, if you want to go for the steampunk, and I do have a little gear with a heart on it. I wonder how cute that will be. Of course, you have to empty them all out just to get the one you want. Excuse me. Hmm. That's why you don't want to push anything down. <laughs> I do you like that? What do you think? It just gives it a little something extra. So I'm going to push that down a little bit. You can go ahead and use, um, you know, the oven bake clay or adhesive right now. But I find that when you squish it in as much as I just did that it does stay and it's just about flat with the rest of it so since I've already put that there I guess the top is going to be up here and I just hate committing to drilling a hole in these yet because I might come up with a fancy um, bail for it so I'm not going to do anything to this as far as putting holes for a bell. I think I see a little air bubble. Boop. There we go. Another one down. Okay, so we've got this one. Um, this one is a little bit more entailed. There. Sorry. Uh, but it uses, um, you know, the Makamigani there for center. And I do have a centerpiece that would work right there. You know, it's nice and long enough. And, you know, it's got all the, the colors that I would like to have with it. And then I would just have to decide what colors do I want on the side. Oh my god, I'm fussing with this piece of clay. And let's see. I'm going to stop talking because I need to concentrate when I do this. So I will continue filming and then you can see the process. Okay? Y'all are probably happy. Yay, she shut up. Uh,
Okay, so this one looks like it's done. I always have air bubbles. There we go. That looks better. So that's another simple thing. And just adding the little dots. Um, just, you know, make it more interesting, I guess would be the word. These slices were so thin. <laughs> I was so afraid that I couldn't lay it onto the black without totally messing it up. But it's all connected and I burnished it so it's going to stick. Okay, so on to the next one. And again, I'll think of something else to do with that later. Probably something like this because it just looked funny having such a long, what do you call it, straight edge there. And I'll show you what I use. I'm not going to laugh uh, to make these holes. This is just something I have. This is a foot scrubber, right? <laughs> so I just <laughs> rolled it and used those holes. You know, it's amazing what you can use for um, decoration and texture. Okay, so we still have a lot left over. I haven't really made any earrings. Um, right, so let's see. These are my earrings. And my clay is stuck to it. Let me do a little house cleaning here. Don't want you on there. If just a little bit of clay is stuck, I don't worry about it because it will usually get blended in so that you won't even know it was there. But I do try to separate and save as much as I can because I know I'm out of several and I don't go to town every day. <laughs> Maybe once a month. Okay. Let's see. You're all good. You're good. You're good. Okay, let's separate your colors. Now, these are a cute little design pack that I got off of Amazon. And hopefully I can remember to share the link. So, roll over them with the chair. Let's see, what colors do we like? Um, I want something different. Um, and, let me see. I'm looking at this over here. This is really thick, so I made it into a pendant necklace. And I need to buy some smaller little rivets. People call them grommets, rivets. The package says rivets. This is kind of on the big side. I don't know if it's five millimeter. It's like a quarter inch. So these are too big for my taste since I make smaller items. Now the pendant, it would probably be okay. You know, something that big. But sometimes I want something smaller. So I'm on the lookout for smaller thingies. So what I want to do is... Um, like a gradient, not a gradient, but use two of the same, two different things. I will get it out. Yes. Whew. That was close. Okay. I want to do this piece. Here. I don't want to lay it on the, because it sticks. I don't want to lay it on here. It's easier to peel off, off the parchment paper. If it wasn't so thin, it wouldn't be such a problem, but wow. <laughs> I made it so thin. Make sure I have the right side. Okay, so... And this way I don't have to piece this part like I did the last time. Last time I cut, you know, this piece with the blade and then squished them together. But since this is already there and that is thin enough, it looks like they are 
you know, already cut and squished together. Ah, don't stick to me. Please, please, please. Okay. Let's bring it just a bit. I'm just pressing really slightly just so that it's not a huge bump on the blue base. There we go. And now, for some reason I want that on the bottom. And it doesn't have to be on the bottom. And I said, so if I do it that way, now I'm overthinking it. Which way do I need to turn this? Okay, I need to turn this one this way. Give it a little weight. I'll just uh, release the pressure. Voila, I have got two earrings. And let's put the hole in it now before I forget. There. So now I want to do this. So that just doesn't look right. It just seems like it should be on the side. So let's add some more over here. Um, I have another piece hiding. We are going to cut you. See how I want to pull it apart. And, oops, I don't want to be over there. more of a bump there. Okay, so now we have these. I do like that. I have some of that, but now it looks plain. So let's, <laughs> even if I do it more that way, do I have room here? Hmm. Or does it have to Oh, that's way too much thinking. How do I do that? I'm going to call it. Oh. I'm trying to do them opposite. My mind just shuts off. Okay. So... Don't want to waste that. We can put a couple of these. What do you think? Do I have one there? Yes. Put that. Mm. I love all these swirlies. Okay. To put a hole. Ooh, I forgot to put the hole in these. Holes in everybody. Okay, so there we go. We got another two sets out of that. Just gotta let your imagination fly. You know, looking at YouTube, not YouTube, but Pinterest, and then you're saving a lot of the images, and then looking at those images right before you go to make something, I think that's where everything just, like, spills out, and... Um, 
I might be combining two people's ideas into one. You know, I don't know. But I know it's all oh, it can't be me, so I, I gotta give credit to everyone else. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just putting these on the cookie sheet to get them off of here. All the way. So here's the cookie sheet. So we got quite a bit made already just from that little tiny Makumagani thing. <laughs> thing. <laughs> and we still got some more. So let's see. Do we want to do another? Um, we want to do something with black um, to highlight something. Kind of as a contrast to things. You get over here. I know you're good to go. The rest I'll scrape off later. But I know you're all good. Um, we might do that. So I might need some more black. Come back here. Put a little bit of beige on there, and that's okay. When you do have something stuck to your black, it all fades into black. <laughs> I mean, the black becomes duller, but let's go ahead and roll this out to pendant, oh, to pendant thickness. And let's see where we go from there. I can holes already that I can see. I'm going to pop some of the holes. Anything else? Anything else? Oh, yeah. Just the back and I want to use this again because it's cute. Gotta get my use out of it, right? Okay. There we go. Dry that up again with a clean piece of towel. Really not if it hurts anything the water I've heard them say it does I just don't know what it does okay so let's show you how to do a ziggy zag so I've just got an old bank card see it's old <laughs> um I'm going to start making some lines I'm not going to press all the way through um, just lightly, because I, oh yeah, and it always wants to come up on me, so I do have to put it on this. I'm kind of trying to get, you know, equal spaces, but since I can't put my head over it, I have no idea. Then I'm just going to come at an angle. not that deep but I don't want to cut through you know and it show on the other side see good I didn't cut through to the other side which is a doors song yeah I'm annoying that way this is silver I'm sure I got this Hobby Lobby I didn't pay that much <laughs> But this is Silver Jacquard Pearl X Powdered Pigments, Silver 663. I'm not used to saying all the stuff. Because normally it's just me here. I'm 
trying to tap off so that it doesn't go into all the grooves. I don't know where I'm going to lay my pieces yet, so I'm just covering my bases here. There we go. Get wet behind real quick so I don't get the mica powder over everything. I just put my nail in the thing. Oh, I cannot have clean nails. All right, what were we going to do? Oh, I guess we were going to do another one of those split things. How about that? Um, that's another end piece. Bottom piece. God, that's so cool. Boy, the black went into the turquoise. You can see I use circles. And that's in the video. So, well, I wanted it to tear, you know, like really tear <laughs> I don't want a nice clean edge all right I'm gonna run this on a three to see if that'll thin it out so now we're down to a four because that didn't do anything now we're gonna go down to a five okay so that is you know quite thin for me and Let's use the little bitty jagged edge one since we haven't used her yet. I can dig it out without poking myself. It'd be nice. Okay, so how do I want to do this? Maybe up here. Because I don't even know what cutter I'm going to use. Let's bend it. Just to make it interesting. That hurts my fingers. I have wimpy fingers. Okay. Hmm. I think I better plan ahead. Let me get something. Don't want to use another one of these. Don't want to use this. That's enough room. I don't think I have enough of that, so let's get something smaller. Okay, I like this. Alright, let's put you through on the number five as well. It didn't stretch it out much because it was already so thin, but it did make it more level. All right, so let's try this long edge. Let's see if I can bend it more. These things are so, nah. They're so strong and I'm not. There we go. We'll take it. Don't want that touching. I want it to. Well, I want it touching but not overlapping like it was. All right, furnish time. There we go. So. We can have it going through it. We can have it going up and down it. And that light is like in my face. Um, let me see what that other one was. It's like I don't want to waste any of this yumminess. Do I have enough room? How big is this thing? Never seem to have the right size of anything, but that takes up more. 
I think that'll be okay. Let's just have my new word now is commit. <laughs> Go for it. Because if you overthink it, you just, you're going to overthink it and you're not going to make anything. Okay, what do we got? Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty. I just love all that. Whee! Okay. And I'm not going to punch a hole in it because, obviously, I want to make a bell. A clay bell after it's so done. We'll add that to the stack over there. And I'm not going to clean this up right now. So, let's see. The other fun thing that I like to do... And this is why I even started. I wanted to make some cabochons to um, beat around instead of buying them. Let me just quick little mist. And then I'm going to remove most of it. It just has to be damp. Otherwise, your piece will just slide around in here. All right, so we've got just a teensy bit left. Um... So this obviously is the good side. So let's see. I'm going to stick that down. Face first. And then I'm just going to use this to smooth it around. Make sure it's touching it nicely. Oh, that's going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to be cool because, you know, the colors that you use. And I don't have any scrap clay yet because I'm not done making things. But here's my scrap clay. So instead of using up your good pieces that I can, you know, I can still make stuff out of this. Um, you just get your Ucky clay. And use that to fill it up. You're not going to see the back of it. We're going to fold this over anyway. Because normally when you're making cabochons, you're placing them onto something. And I have been attaching these to um, other clay to make pendants out of them. You know, decorative things. So... I don't know if this needs to be cut or not. Let's see. Just to make it a little flatter on the bottom. Definitely easier to sand off, you know, when you're all done. But look at how pretty that gown becomes. You know, with the black and the the blue and some of it turned to green because of the ecru. Oh, I do like this. You like it? You like it? Oh, that drives me nuts. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have many pet peeves, but I can't see it if you keep moving it. So that's another thing is to um, when you have pieces that aren't pretty, there's nothing else to do with them. You roll it up with some other pieces like this thing didn't have any good um, image on it that I could use. These little bits of scrap that are just too teeny tiny to make anything with. You just you want to make sure you squeeze the air out. Give it a little roll. And you know, whichever one I think it'll fit. I could have put it in a bigger one and really squished it out. And then added some of the the other clay on top. I just wanted to show you how quick these are and how cute they become so that you don't... Okay, I'll cut all that off later. You're not wasting anything. Now all of a sudden you're getting the marbled effect instead of, you know, the designs or the swirls. You can even use these and put them in there. Oh, get off that. Um, so that's just another thing. I have used up the whole thing by just... You know, make it smaller, smaller, smaller. I used up every single bit of it. 
Now I'll save some for, you know, this purpose. And that is that. So, so far, I can't put this down anywhere on the top of the clay. Uh, oh. Okay, so, so far we've made all of these. I mean, and that was, like I said, it was one and a half bars of each. But by using, you know, black clay and even other clay that you might have used, you know, for the backing, you stretched out that little piece of makumigani or the cane or whatever it is you're using. You stretched it out to make a ton more jewelry. I'll call, let's just call it jewelry then. Um, and it's just more fun. I use, I like sanding things down. I guess it's just zen like. You can also add more embellishments on here if you like. I do have. I want to show you this. Let me put this down real quick. And then I'll let you go. This is another nail art bit. Uh, nail art rhinestones. So look at these tiny little things. I haven't even tried to open that yet. That's crazy little. But you've got different, and they're so small that they're perfect. You know, you've got different designs, hearts, stars, rectangles, anything. Um, here you got some leaves and stuff, and stars and sunbursts and clamshells and seahorses. So definitely look into that, you know, nail art, you know, just look up nail art. This kit came with a sticky tool. Just have to sharpen, eh, sharpen it and that'll help you apply them. Um, when I do use this, sometimes I put resin over it. Sometimes I don't, you know, it's just the style that I'm going for. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you, you know, a head start on, on, I'm thinking of outside the box, I guess you would call it, of what you can do and what you can make with just a little bit of clay to start with and adding it to others and making, you know, so many different pieces. It's just so much fun. And even if this is pretty, I'll go ahead and stick that in the bottom and use that because it's just, it's pretty. It'll be pretty once you smush it out. <laughs> So, like I said, every little bit I use, and I hope this has helped. I hope this inspired you. Like I say, if I can do it, I know you can, and um, I appreciate you watching, and I'll show you a clip. Once I've cleaned them up, I'll send them down, and I'll polish them up. I've got the Renaissance wax. It gives them a nice shine. Um, since I didn't do micas and stuff on the top, then I'm not going to worry about resining or varnishing. I'm just going to do the wax. So I'll put a picture at the end of the video for you. So happy crafting, y'all. Bye-bye.